Good day, Grade 12. Welcome to this lesson today, which we are doing in preparation for your exam that you are writing on Monday. I really hope that today's exam, the paper one went well, but you know what? No matter what happened in paper one today or how you think paper went, one went today, I want you guys to think now that what I used to do was that I used to think, okay, fine, it's gone. It's done. There's nothing more I can do about it, but what I can do now is focus all my energies on doing really, really well in paper two, which is on Monday. So I want you to forget about paper one now. I don't care if you wrote an awesome paper for paper one and you're on a total high because it was fantastic, or you wrote a shocking paper for paper two. It was just a horrible paper. It didn't work for you. And I don't know, things just didn't go well. You pen ran out of ink, your calculator ran out of batteries, whatever. It doesn't matter anymore, okay? It's gone. It's finished. We are now going to focus on something that you can work towards, which is working towards paper two. So that's what we're going to do in this lesson, okay? So what I've done is I've chosen a very good school. Um, they will remain nameless, okay? <laughs> and I have gone, got the uh, paper two, and we'll be working through the paper to the prelim paper from this year, okay? And we're going to be working through their questions on their paper too. So let's get started straight away. We're starting with um, coordinate geometry or um, analytical geometry. It says in the diagram, A is minus 3, 4, B is 4, 8, C is 5, 0, and D are the vertices of a parallelogram. They tell you it's a parallelogram, A, B, C, D. So we know that A, B, C, D is a parallelogram, right? And I'm just going to do it in red. And guys, don't be shy to use color on your diagrams, okay? It really does help you see what's going on. It says B, C is extended to E and D, E is parallel with the x-axis. So DE is parallel with the x-axis over there. Okay, that's interesting. It says determine the equation of the line BE, BE. Okay, well that's a pretty easy question to start with because do you agree we've got two we've got two points? Although they're asking for the equation of the line B. E, we've got point B, 4, 8, and point C, 5, 0, which are both on that straight line. So we can say, well, we got Y equals, let's try again, we've got M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. I need to find the gradient because the equation of a straight line is Y is equal to MX plus C. So the first thing we're going to do is find the gradient. So we need to allocate one of these points as point one and the other as point two. It really doesn't matter which ones they are. We just have to go for it. So let's call this point two and this point one. So therefore we've got eight minus zero y2 minus y1 is equal to four min over four minus five y x2 minus x1 which is going to be 8 over negative 1, which is negative 8. So does that look about right? Well, it's a very steep line, we agree, and it is slightly off to the left-hand side, so therefore it should be a negative gradient. Therefore, we've got y is equal to negative x plus c, okay, uh, negative 8x, should I say? Negative 8x plus c. Now we need to find a c. In order to find the c, we need to substitute in either of these points. I'm going to substitute point 1 in just because I choose to. So y is 0. So you've got 0 is equal to minus 8 times by 5 plus c. So 0 is equal to minus 40 plus c. So c is equal to 40. So therefore, the equation of the line BE is, oh, sorry, y is equal to negative 8x plus 40. Okay, now it says they want us to work out the coordinates of d. Okay, now 
You need to look at the uh, points allocation, the mark allocation. And I haven't included the mark allocation in here just because I couldn't fit it in when I was copying and pasting the questions. But this is about a two mark question, okay? So you're really not looking at doing a huge amount of work, okay? And the reason for that is that they have told you that A, B, C, D is a parallelogram, which means what? It means that because the gradient, because this line here is parallel to this line, okay or that line is parallel to this line what it means is the amount that we have to go across and the amount we have to go down over here has to be the same as the amount we have to go across here and the amount we have to go down to get to d okay which means if i look at the x values i can say i've gone from four to negative three so do you agree that means that i've gone across seven units to the left i've gone from four to minus three so it's four minus minus three which is seven units to the left that means that this point D has to go seven units to the left from five, okay? So if I go five minus seven, I end up at minus two. So the X value here is minus two. Similarly, if you look over here, we're going from eight to four. This point here is that the Y value is eight and the Y value over here is four. So from eight to four is gone down by four. So this from zero, if I subtract four, is going to be negative four. So therefore, the coordinates of D are minus two, minus four. Now, grade 12, you're welcome to have used um, this, the fact that how this has changed to change that. In other words, this is going to cross from four to five. So therefore, this is going to cross from minus three to minus two. This is going to cross from eight to zero. So, I mean, from up from down from eight to zero, so this must also have gone down eight units from four to minus four. So it doesn't matter which way you do it. Okay. Right, let me just erase all the extraneous writing over here that we don't need because I think it's going to get a bit busy otherwise. Right, now it says, determine the coordinates of P where P is the point of intersection of the diagonals A, B, C, D. Okay. What's interesting about point P is that it is the intersection of the diagonals A, B, C, D. So what they're expecting you to know is one of the properties of a parallelogram. And one of the properties of a parallelogram is the diagonals, diagonals bisect each other. Okay, which means that I can work out the midpoint of either line AC or line DB and I will find P. Now, just a little hint, since they've given us the values of A and the value of, five, of C and you had to work out D, I would use AC the line AC, just in case I messed up. Just now I subtracted incorrectly or wrote down the wrong value and didn't realize it, okay? So in case I've messed up, I will always revert back to something that I can use, okay? Something I can use that is being given to me. So in this case, they gave me A and they gave me C, so I can use that to find P. So therefore P is equal to what? It's equal to X1, plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2, okay? So therefore, we're going to use a and c. So we're going to leave that as question point 1 then because we had used this point 1 before and we're going to use this as point 2. So that becomes x1 is 5 plus minus 3 all over 2. And that is 0 plus 4 over 2, which is going to be 5 minus 3 is 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. So therefore, this point here is 1, 2. That point there is 1, 2. So point P is at 1, 2. Right, now it says prove that A, B, C, D is a rhombus. Okay, so they've already told us that ABCD is a parallelogram. What are the differences between ABCD being a parallelogram and ABCBD being a rhombus? Well, one of the things 
is that with a parallelogram, only two pairs, the two pairs of opposite sides are equal. Whereas, in other words, AB is equal to DC and BC is equal to AD. And the other thing is that the diagonals bisect at 90 degrees. So we've got two options here. We can either prove that the length of AB equals the length of BC, for example, that these two lines are equal. If that was the case, that would mean that was equal to that and that was equal to that and all four sides would be equal and that would definitely be a rhombus. Or we could use the gradient of this and use the gradient of that and prove that they are at 90 degrees to each other and therefore this is definitely a rhombus. But I think I'm going to go with the lengths of the lines. So I'm going to find the length of AB. So AB is equal to, okay, we can call this point 0.1 now. Okay, the square root of x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. Okay, it really doesn't matter which order you do this in. Okay, so we've got x1 is minus 3. So it's minus 3 minus 4 squared plus y1 is 4 minus 8 all squared, which is the square root of minus 3 minus 4 is minus 7. Squared is 49 plus 4 minus 8 is minus 4 squared is 16, which is the square root of 65, am I right? Yes, I am. So that's 65. Right, so therefore the length of this is square root 65. Now let's find the length of BC. Let's find the length of BC. So I'm just going to get rid of this. and this and see what the length of BC is. I'm going to change color because that green is hurting my eyes. I don't know why. Uh, let's go to, hmm, let's just go to dark blue. So now we're looking at the length of BC. So BC is equal to, and we're going to call this point one and point two. So it's the square root of X1, five minus four squared, plus 8 minus 0 squared, which is going to be the square root of 1 plus 64, which is square root 65. So therefore, this is square root 65. And since we now know that all four sides are parallel and all four sides are equal, it's a rhombus. All four sides parallel and equal. There you go. Now they ask us to calculate the size of angle A, C, B. They want this angle here, the size of that angle A, C, B. Okay, so now the way that they actually want you to do this is not to use trig, <laughs> except for you are using trig, but not as in a soccer toe type thing. What we need to do is this. We need to find, okay, just watch this, okay? We're going to find the gradient of that line and find that angle. Then we got the gradient of this line, so that's quite easy. So therefore we can work out that angle and then we can therefore work out the little angle in the middle. That's what we're gonna do. So first thing we're gonna do is use the big, the gradient of BC to find the angle of BC um, O. Okay, because that's the x-axis, okay? So we're going to say, we know that tan theta, okay, no, let's not call it theta, um, tan of angle BCO, BCO is equal to the gradient of 8, okay? And what I'd like to suggest is that you never put the negative in but we can always convert depending on what the size looks like, okay? So therefore, BCO is going to be second function tan of 8. So what we do then is we go shift tan 8 equals 82.87 degrees. 
So angle BCO is 82, BCO is 82,87 degrees. So this year, this whole angle there is 82,87 degrees, right? Now we need to get this angle. So we're going to use the gradient of AC, okay? So we're going to go M of AC, which is going to be 4 minus 0 over minus 3 minus 5, which is 4 over negative 8, which is minus a half. So then we're going to go tan of this angle, which is ACO. ACO is equal to a half. And remember what I said to you, you never put the minus into that. You rather just find out the size of the angle and decide if you need the acute obtuse angle. So we're going to go shift tan of 0.5, close bracket, equals 26.57 degrees. So ACO is 26,57 degrees, right? So therefore we can work out what X is, which is the angle they want, ACB. ACB is equal to 82,87 minus 26,57 degrees which equals 82.87 minus 26.57, which is going to be 56.3 degrees. So this is 56,3 degrees. There you go. Now we know what that is. Now it says calculate the length of DE. DE. Okay, so that's interesting. Okay, so let's first erase this. <clears throat> the reason it's interesting is that if you look at this, you can see that DE is parallel to the x-axis, which means what? What is not going to change, the x value or the y value along that line? Okay, do you agree that since it's parallel to the x-axis, okay, the x values will change, but the y value is not? It's going to remain the same distance away from the x-axis. So therefore, the y value here is negative 4. Okay, but we don't know what the x value is. We don't know what that is. But we can substitute y equal minus 4 into the equation of the line BE and find this x value. Do you agree? So we can say minus 4 is equal to minus 8 times by x plus 40. Right, so if we take it across, we've got minus 44 is minus 8x, okay, and then we can divide both sides by minus 8, and we've got 44 divided by 8, and if we get out our calculators, that's 44 divided by 8 is going to be 5.5, 5, 5, 5. So therefore, x is 5, 5. Right. Now, that's not what they asked. They asked for the length of DE. But do you agree that this is 2 units long? It's at minus 2, but that's 2 units long, and this is 5.5 units long. So therefore, D DE is 7,5 units long. Finally, they're asking you to calculate the area of triangle ABC. ABC. Okay, let's just find, let's highlight it. So we want an area of A, B, C. Okay, now we know that since this is a rhombus, the diagonal is bisected 90 degrees, right? So therefore we can use this as a base, AC as a base, and BP as a height. So we can say <clears throat> that basically we've got this going where this is A at negative 3, 4. This is P, which is at 1, 2. This is C, which is 5, 0. And B 
is 4, 8. So do you agree if I find the length of B, P, and I find the length of AC, then I can use my area rule, which area says it's a half base times height, where this will be the base and this will be the height. Okay. The other way of doing it is using trig and using area is equal to half AB sine C, because we've already got this size angle and we've got that side and that side. So by Pythagoras, oh no, we can't do by Pythagoras because we don't know that that's 90 degrees. Okay, fine. So therefore we have to use, oh no, but since that's root 65 and that's root 65, this will have the same angle. Oh, there we go. Okay, let's rather do that. Okay, so we're going to cheat and use trig. Okay, we're going to, they can't actually correct, um, you, you aren't actually wrong by using it. Okay, we know that this angle there is 56 comma 3 degrees. We know this is root 65 and that's root 65. So therefore we know that this angle here is 56 comma 3 degrees, right? And therefore we can work out what that angle is. Okay, that's going to be 180 degrees minus 2 times 56 comma 3. So let's get out our calculators and it's going to be 180 minus bracket 2 times 56.3 close bracket equals 67.4. So that is equal to that angle there is equal to 67.4 degrees. Okay, so now we can say area is equal to half AB sine C, which is going to be a half root 65, root 65, sine the angle between them, which is 67 comma 4. Okay, let me just draw this out so you can see what I'm doing. This here is A, this is B, this is C. We worked out earlier that this was root 65, and we worked out earlier that this was root 65. We also worked out earlier that this was 56 comma 3 degrees. Because these, this is an isosceles triangle because these two lines are equal, we can say, well, therefore we know that this is 56 comma 3 degrees. Then using angle sum of a triangle, we can get that that is 67 comma 4 degrees. And now we can use this area rule where this little line will be A, this little line will be B, and this angle, yeah, would be the big sign C. So we've got a half multiplied by 65 sine 67 comma 4 degrees. Okay, so we've got 0.5 times 65 times sine 67.4 close bracket equals, and that's 30, 0 0.004, so it's just 30. So the area is 30 square units. There we go. Okay. You're welcome to have used the area rule, which is a half base times height, but that might um, have taken a bit longer. Right, let's move on to this question. The next question is, it's got a circle, okay? And they've been a bit mean because they've got a circle with center P has an equation, x squared plus y squared minus 18x plus 6y plus 45. It says QS is a tangent to the circle, at Q and SR is a tangent at R, okay, and S is the point of intersection. So first of all, those two lines are equal, by the way, because those two are two lines that are touching the tangents, okay? Now it says, answers to this question should be left in third form, and you always need to be careful to look for that. Then it says, write down the coordinates of P and the length of PQ. So what they're really wanting us to do is take this equation for the circle where it's x squared um, plus y squared minus 18x minus 6y plus 45 equals 0. 
And what they want us to do is they want us to rearrange it and complete the square. That's what they're really asking us to do. So let's do that. We've got x squared minus 18x, okay, plus y squared minus 6y is equal to negative 45 because you're going to take everything that's not got a y in it or x in it to the other side. Okay, so now we're going to complete the square. So what do we do this? We halve it and square it. So it becomes x squared minus 18x plus halve it, 18 divided by 2 all squared. Okay, that's the first one. Plus y squared minus 6y plus you halve it and square it. So it's 6 over 2 all squared is equal to minus 45, but now what you do to the one side, you have to do the other side. So you have to add 18 divided by 2 is 9, and 9 squared is 81, plus 6 divided by 2 is 3, 3 squared is 9, sorry, I just realized I screwed up there. Um, 6 divided by 2 is 3, 3 squared is 9. Okay, so therefore we go, and then we go. Take the square root of the first one, x, the sine minus this thing here, 18 divided by 2, which is 9, all squared, plus y minus 6 divided by 2 is 3, all squared, is equal to, and now we need a calculator. So it's going to be 81, hmm, let's delete, 81 plus 9 minus 45. <sighs> 81 plus 9 minus 45 equals 45. That's 45. Therefore, the center of the circle is at 9, 3, okay? And the distance from P to Q is going to be square root 45. And no, you don't work that out because they say the answer should be left in third form. So this is going to be 9, 3, and this is going to be square root 45. Okay, now I'm just going to raise all this bit. Right. Now it says, if the equation of the tangent to circle at Q is Y is equal to 2X, determine the coordinates of Q. Hmm. So that's interesting. So we've got the line Y equals 2X, and it is just touching the circle. Oh, sorry. And it is just touching the circle with the equation x minus 9 squared plus y minus 3 squared is equal to 45. Okay, so these two are just touching. So what must I do? I must obviously substitute the one in for the other. So wherever I see a y, I'm going to write 2x. So I'm going to go x minus 9 squared plus 2x minus 3 all squared is equal to 45, and I am now going to solve for this. So this becomes x squared, x it becomes minus 9x, minus 9x is minus 18x, plus 81, plus, and then this becomes 2x times by 2x is 4x squared, minus 6x, minus 6x is minus 12x, plus 9 is equal to 45, and then we've got to add the like terms. So x squared plus 4x squared is 5x squared. Minus 18 minus 12 is minus 30x. And then 81 plus 9 minus 45 happens to be 45. So it becomes plus 45 equals 0. Now, obviously, we can divide this whole thing by 5 to get rid of the common factors. So we've got x squared minus 6x plus 9 is equal to 0. My factors of 9 are going to be 3 and 3, so it's x minus 3 
x minus 3 equals 0. Therefore, x is equal to 3. And you guys should obviously get two equal real roots because it's where it's just touching. Okay, it doesn't cross. So there's not going to be two places where this touches, I mean, where this crosses. When there's only two solutions, there's going to be one solution. So therefore, we know that q, the x value is 3, and the y value is 2 times 3, which is 6. So that's what that value point is there, is 3, 6. Okay, so now we've done that. 3, 6. Now it says show that the tangent at r has the equation x minus 2y plus w. Hmm. Okay, so what the first thing we need to do is find the gradient of the radius, okay, from r to p. And why do we want to do that? Well, if we find the gradient of this line, then we know that these are perpendicular, and then we can find that gradient, and then we got that point. So the first thing we're going to do is find the gradient of RP, which is going to be, we might as well call this point 1 and this point 2, so it's going to be 9 minus 3 over 6 minus 9, which is going to be 6 over negative 3, which is negative 2. So therefore, the gradient of the sign is minus 2. So what does that mean the gradient of this tangent will be? Well, we know that MRP multiplied by the M of the gradient has to equal negative 2. Therefore, we can say that this is, I mean, it has to be negative 1. Sorry. It has to be equal to negative 1. That's the rule. Okay, that's negative 1. But this is minus 2. So it's minus 2 multiplied by m of the gradient has to equal to negative 1. Therefore, m of the gradient is equal to a half. So for the gradient of this, m equals a half. Now, all we have to do is find the equation by substituting this point through 6, 9. So we go y is equal to a half x plus c, but here's the point six nine, so we've got nine is a half times by six plus c, so nine is equal to three plus c, so c is obviously equal to six, okay. So what is our equation then? So if our equation is y is equal to a half x plus six, Okay, so now if we look at this, you can see that it looks like it could possibly go the way we want it to, but there is a 2 and a 12 where this is a half x plus 6. But what happens if we multiply the whole thing by 2? The whole thing by 2, let's do that. If we multiply the whole thing by 2, we get 2y is equal to x plus 12. Now let's take everything onto the one side, so we get 0 is equal to x minus 2y plus 12, and ta-da, that there is the equation for the tangent. Finally, they asked us to find the length of sq, the length of sq. Okay, so if you look at this, we've got that this line intersects that line, okay? We've got the equation for this line, it's y is equal to 2x. We've got the equation for this line, it's y minus two, x minus 2y plus 12 equals 0. So do you agree to find that point s, all we need to do is simultaneously equate. So let's do that. So we're going to go, we've got y equals 2x, so what we're going to do is substitute that into, yeah. So we're going to go x minus 2 times by 2x plus 12 equals 0. So you would x minus 4x plus 12 equals 0. So you get negative 3x is equal to negative 12. So x equals 4. So that point there is 4. And now we need to get the y value. So we just substitute into y is equal to 2x. So the y value there is 8. Okay, nice. So now we've got the point S, which is 4, 8. 
but that's not what they asked. They asked for the length of SQ. And we've got the point Q, it's 3, 6. So therefore it's pretty easy to find the length of that line because we now have the two points. So we can say SQ is equal to the square root of, and it doesn't matter which way we do this, 4 minus 3 squared plus 8 minus 6 squared, which becomes the square root of 4 minus 3 is 1, squared is 1, 8 minus 6 squared is 2, squared which is 4, so this becomes the square root of 5. Ta-da! Nice, eh? Not too bad. Right, let's do the next question. Okay, so now we're moving on to trig, okay? And they love asking these questions. So as soon as you see something like if tan of theta is equal to, in this case, minus 2, or if um, cos theta is 3 over 5, whatever, and they say, and the theta is between 0 and 180, what they're expecting you to do is use a diagram. Okay, so let's just, first of all, go all stations to Cape Town. Okay, theta is between 0 and 180. So theta is either in this quadrant or the second quadrant. But tan theta is negative, so it has to be in this quadrant. So we're looking at an angle theta where tan theta is minus 2 over 1. There's an implied 1 there. Sneaky, hey? So if we go Sakatoa, do you agree that tan is opposite over adjacent? So we're looking at minus 2 over 1. And now we need to find the hypotenuse. So in order to find the hypotenuse, we need to use um, just do the Pythagoras thing. So we're going to go r is equal to the square root of minus 2 squared plus 1 squared, which is going to be the square root of minus 2 squared is 4 plus 1, which is the square root of 5. So this is the square root of 5. Right. Next they ask us, oh, sorry. Next they ask us, for tan of 180 minus theta. Oh, listen, guys, just for the record, there are marks allocated for drawing this, okay? So please don't think that you, if you're gaining anything by not drawing this. What they're doing is they are actually, because everything you do costs time, and I know that in the real world we say time is money, but when it comes to academics and exams, time is marks, okay? So the fact that you've done this means they have to allocate you some marks because you've used up some of your time, understand? So please don't think, oh, I didn't show that, therefore I wasn't wasting time. It's very important that there are marks allocated to it. Okay, so now tan of 180 minus theta is found in the second quadrant. And tan of, and therefore it's equal to tan theta, which is just going to be negative 2. So nothing changes there. Now let's talk about cos of 90 minus theta over cos theta. Cos of 90 minus theta, that is a co-ratio. And that is found in the first quadrant. So that becomes sine theta over cos theta, which equals tan theta, which equals negative 2. Okay, so that's also negative 2. Now let's talk about sine of theta plus 30 degrees. So sine of theta plus 30 degrees. So this is a sneaky question. And what you need to be doing is going and looking at your formula sheet for the rule of your sine, your compound angle for sine if you don't know it already. So you could break this up into sine theta cos 30 plus cos theta sine 30. 
Okay. And why is that important? Because do you agree that we've got this triangle over here, which helps us with the sine and cos of theta? And then there's a special angle triangle that goes 60, 30 to 1 root 3. Okay, so what we're going to do is use a combination of this diagram and this triangle to solve this. So sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, it's minus 2 over root 5. Cos of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is root 3 over 2. Cos of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 1 over root 5. Sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, which is 1 over 2. So therefore, do you agree you've got a oh, running out of space? Okay, let me just write it above it. Okay, so I'm writing above it. So this becomes minus 2 root 3 over 2 root 5 plus 1 over 2 root 5, oopsie, which equals over 2 root 5, 1 minus 2 root 3. And that's it. That's as far as we need to go. And unfortunately, we've run out of time, grade 12, but please go and look at the links. Um, I know that the lady in charge of it has posted the links that are appropriate to all the paper two exam paper questions. Um, so go and look at the links of all the videos we've done so far and you can see which sections have been done. Um, otherwise, use the Turnable platform. Please, 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 this weekend is going to be very important for you to practice. And guys, go learn your theorems, especially geometry theorems. I'm serious. They're going to give you geometry theorems, circle geometry theorems. Okay, have a great weekend and good luck for paper two. Cheers.